Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 287 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to talk about some pervasive rosacea myths to help provide some insight into what is and is not a factor driving your rosacea, especially since April is Rosacea Awareness Month. Now, rosacea is a chronic skin rash condition that impacts approximately 16 million Americans and 415 million people worldwide. And just like many of the other chronic skin conditions that I talk about here on the Healthy Skin Show, there is a lot of misinformation out there that can leave you feeling ashamed and very disempowered about your skin. My hope is that this episode will provide some direction for you if you or someone you know is struggling with rosacea based on helpful resources I've pulled together for you along with what's already available on the show. Know that there are things you can dig into and try even if your rosacea is now more severe, so don't give up. The severe cases I've worked on have experienced major improvements even when the nose has become impacted, experiencing pretty bad rhinophyma. Many clients have no longer needed to wear concealer anymore to hide the redness and feel much more comfortable in their own skin. So while there are certainly external factors at play, there are internal imbalances that should be considered. So let's dive in to some rosacea myth busting. Myth number one, rosacea is the same thing as acne. Now, despite the commonly used term acne rosacea, rosacea is not acne, nor is acne the same thing as rosacea. They are two very different conditions, and I've got a great chart available for you to see the differences between these two conditions over in the show notes at skinterrupt.com forward slash 287. I think it's also worth mentioning that there are different types of rosacea, some of which impact the face, Others can impact the eyes, and that's known as ocular rosacea. And rosacea can also vary in severity. And for some individuals, unfortunately, it can become quite disfiguring. Now, one of my clients with severe rosacea would only go out if he was wearing thick makeup because of how embarrassed he was after living with it for three decades. And like others with severe rosacea, his progressed causing changes to the texture of his skin and size of his nose. This progression is known as rhinophyma, which impacts men more so than women. And though rhinophyma is often assumed to be due to heavy alcohol consumption, research doesn't support this connection. Myth number two, you triggered rosacea because you're dirty. One of the most common assumptions from people who don't have a chronic skin condition is that your red inflamed skin is due to poor hygiene. And to be clear, rosacea is not triggered because your face isn't clean. But harsh exfoliation, strong drying ingredients in skincare and makeup, as well as excessive use of anti-aging products can trigger rosacea. According to Healthy Skin Show expert Rachel Pontillo, rosacea skin requires a simpler, more gentle skincare routine since heat, harsh chemicals, and even gentle exfoliation can trigger or worsen rosacea. We discuss strategies for caring for rosacea skin and how to clean your face in episode 160, which I'll link for you in the show notes. Myth number three, rosacea is contagious. Without a doubt, rosacea as a condition is not contagious. However, if there is a skin infection helping to drive the rosacea, the infection could be contagious. One overlooked type of skin infestation with a strong link to rosacea is from Demodex mites, which I've actually talked about in episode 136 with Dr. Peter Leo. Demodex mites can be contagious and pass to others in your home. 
On top of this, more research is emerging on the relationship between Demodex and rosacea, including this new study that is still under review at the time of this episode's release. Now, researchers in this study compared the Demodex burden in 82 patients with rosacea versus 82 healthy controls without any skin conditions. They found that, quote, the Demodex burden in patients with rosacea was approximately 30 times higher than in healthy controls, end quote. And that it was caused by co-infection of D. folliculorum and D. brevis. And that D, by the way, stands for Demodex. So if your dermatologist has not checked your skin for this type of mite, which is a parasite, by the way, that can impact not only your skin, but also the eyelid area, ask them to evaluate your skin for a Demodex infestation. I mention this because there is also research demonstrating that there can be an inflammatory or cytokine component to rosacea. For example, rosacea skin tends to show higher levels of interleukin-8, interleukin-1 beta, and tumor necrosis factor alpha produced by keratinocytes when, quote, TLR2 is activated by external stimuli or triggering factors, end quote. And I mention this because IL-8, IL-1 beta, and tumor necrosis factor alpha can be increased in response to Demodex mites on your face. I'm often asked about topical options to help support a healthy skin microbiome that are super clean and gentle enough for reactive skin and even safe for babies. And what fits the bill is an antibacterial molecule called hypochlorous acid, which is as natural as it gets since it's made by your body by your white blood cells. My favorite hypochlorous acid product that I frequently recommend to my eczema, psoriasis, and TSW clients is called Active Skin Repair, which is FDA cleared and comes in both a spray as well as a gel, making application really easy. Active Skin Repair is vegan, has zero odor, can be used up to five times a day, is safe for all ages, including infants and your pets, and can be used on all different areas of your body, including around your mouth, nose, ears, and eyes. Plus, it doesn't contain any antibiotics, steroids, petroleum, toxic chemicals, or added fragrances. My own personal experience using Active Skin Repair is that the spray feels like water, while the gel feels like a slightly thicker water without irritating the area further. To add this to your skin protocol, head to bldgactive.com, that's bldgactive.com, and use my code HEALTHYSKINSHOW at checkout to get 20% off your order, and US orders over $35 get free shipping. Again, head to bldgactive.com to get your bottle of Active Skin Repair. And now let's jump back to the episode. Myth number four, alcohol consumption causes rosacea. While it's a common assumption that people with rosacea must drink a lot of alcohol, that's not always the case. In my clinic, I haven't worked with a single rosacea case where alcohol consumption was a factor. The clients who did occasionally have a single serving of alcohol had stopped long ago because they noticed that their skin did seem to get worse with alcohol consumption. And yet, the rosacea persisted. Research shows that alcohol consumption may slightly increase the risk of developing rosacea. Now, if histamine issues are present as an underlying trigger, this would further explain why alcohol, which is very high in histamines, would make your rosacea flare. I dove into the histamine rosacea connection in episode 139, if you're not familiar with this. However, I would caution you from assuming that you have a histamine issue just because you have rosacea. A high histamine diet is not a problem for every case of rosacea. So if following a low histamine diet isn't helping within a couple of weeks, it's safe to assume that histamine may not be a factor for you. Myth number five, rosacea is only a skin problem. 
If there was one thing I wish more rosacea warriors knew, it would be that rosacea can be a sign of internal imbalances. This connection is often overlooked such that people fixate on topical only solutions to mask, reduce, or even to cover the redness. But after working on many cases of rosacea, there are significant internal imbalances that should be considered. First and foremost is the pretty big connection between small intestine bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO, and rosacea. Most research on this relationship indicates that approximately 77% of rosacea cases also have underlying SIBO, and that when the SIBO is addressed, the rosacea may improve or even resolve. If you might recall, Dr. Leonard Weinstock was on the show back in episode 19 discussing his findings and clinical experience as a gastroenterologist working with patients who also had rosacea. Now, there may be a connection as well between rosacea and Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori. This is an infection that occurs in the stomach. But at this point in time, the research still appears to be mixed. Now, in my practice, I've also found that a number of rosacea cases have hidden parasitic infections in the GI tract, such as diatomeba fragilis, endolimax nana, and blastocystis hominis. Conventional medicine doesn't always treat these protozoan infections, but I have found that addressing them can be helpful to reduce, if not resolve, rosacea symptoms. And myth number six, rosacea only impacts light skin tones. As I've previously shared on the Healthy Skin Show, inflammation in the skin does not look the same way in every skin tone. Often, darker skin tones will show inflammation in different shades, such as purple or even gray. And this problem was highlighted by Dr. Hope Mitchell in episode 168, underscoring how much a more inclusive approach to looking for inflammation in different skin tones is needed to make sure that all people, regardless of skin tone, are diagnosed appropriately. So the assumption that rosacea only shows up in lighter, paler skin tones is completely wrong. More current thinking is also acknowledging that perhaps the notion that rosacea prevalence in darker skin tones may be underestimated due to underdiagnosis. One recent paper from 2022 states that, quote, in patients with skin of color, the characteristic manifestations of rosacea, particularly centrofacial erythema, can be masked, impacting the recognition of the diagnosis, end quote. And the publication continues pointing out the importance of having a knowledgeable dermatologist look for other signs that rosacea is present, such as, quote, xerosis or scale, edema, facial acneform papules and pustules, and hyperpigmentation, end quote. As one final point I do want to make, rosacea impacts many more people than is often thought. And yes, Rosacea impacts both men and women. I hope that you have found this episode insightful and that you can see that rosacea is so much more than just a potential progressive condition, that it could be a sign of other issues, both topical and internal, that may be helping to drive the inflammatory process that you experience as a cluster of symptoms known as rosacea. Now, if you've got any questions or thoughts to share about this topic or you want to see the table and the other resources I've put together for you, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 287 so we can keep the conversation going. And I would deeply appreciate if you would pass this episode along to anyone you know who is struggling with rosacea because I oftentimes find that by talking about the myths, we oftentimes learn things about our condition or we can share it with people who just don't seem to get it, that the way that they think about what's happening to you and your health isn't accurate and can oftentimes then lead to a more honest and respectful dialogue. And then before you head off for your day, take a moment to rate and review The Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform. 
and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can tune in each week for new research, clinical tips and strategies, personal stories of triumph, as well as inspiration that you need on your journey to rebuild healthy skin. And then let's connect over on Instagram. I'm at Jennifer Fugo. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to digging deeper with you in the next episode.